It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I want to talk about Check MK. This is an open source IT infrastructure monitoring system. Now there are a lot of these out there. There's Cacti, there's Nagios, there's just there's a lot of these out there and they all take a certain amount of work and expertise to get set up. But when I started looking at this one, their documentation is absolutely amazing. I found it very, very easy for me to get this up and running very quickly on my home lab network, which is great. That's something I'm always looking for. Now, I've had a lot of people say, you know, I just want something that just discovers all of my devices and just monitors them magically, except that's not really how monitoring works. There are certain protocols that you can set up and have things monitored, quote unquote, automatically like SNMP. So short network or simple network message protocol, I believe is what that's called. And you'll get a few things out of that and certain pieces of hardware just have that built in, which is great. But when you really start talking about monitoring your devices and everything else on your network and getting that information, it, it takes a little bit more effort and a little bit more work. And a lot of times you have to install various pieces of software. So the thing I like about CheckMK is that you install the server and it's pretty easy to get the server up and running. And once you've done that, you go and install the agent on the devices that you want to monitor. But this also works across networks. So you're not just talking about with your network at your home, but this could be something where maybe you have something in AWS or in DigitalOcean or in Azure or, or somewhere else out in the cloud and you have like a, a virtual private network that goes between those things. So you can actually set it up so that you're not just monitoring one place, one business, one home lab, but you could be monitoring those things that are out there on the cloud as well. So it's really kind of a cool setup and I think it's got tons of potential for you guys that are interested in networks and monitoring and and really taking control of your networks as your network grows. So I want to show you how to install the server. I'm going to show you how to install the client software on a couple of clients today. It's very straightforward. There's not a lot to it, but there's a little bit of setup once you've installed the client as well, just to get everything ready and kind of up and running. But it's super straightforward. I think you guys are going to really like this one. So stick with me and we'll get into it right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So as we get into this, I want to talk a little bit about the options that you have. So when they talk about solutions, they've got a lot of different things here that you can look at. When you look at their products page, the thing I always like to cover for open source projects is their pricing. I know a lot of people think open source just means free. And there is a free option as in free, it doesn't cost you any money. But really, when you talk open source free, it means freedom, the freedom to change the software, to modify the software, to do whatever you want with the software, to redistribute the software, those kind of things. So for me, it's important to talk about the pricing, because if we don't support open source, it won't continue. It will become the business that's trying to do this thing in open source can't continue in an open source way. They'll have to stop doing the open source part. They may not stop as a business, but they'll stop doing the open source part. So it says, get your check MK subscription. You can see here 25 hosts is free. And then as you move up, you get this 3000 services up to a hundred hosts, $65, 7,000 services up to 200 hosts, $250 or $125. Sorry. And then as you go up to 12,000 services and I don't know, 400 hosts, you get $200. So you can see kind of how their pricing works. And if you need more than that, you can just continue over this way. And it's, it's dollars per month now. I believe that this is part of their, their cloud offering where they're running the service for you. So be aware of that. If it's something where you're like, you know what, I just don't want to run another thing that I have to keep up with. They have services that you can get and they can have, you have things that you can do. Now, if you're, this is Euro. So keep in mind, here's, a, here's US dollars. I'm sorry. I was saying dollars and I was looking at Euros. So it's 65 Euros. Um, you go to US dollars, it's 80 US dollars. So they're kind of looking at the exchange rate for the, for the current time. Okay. So just be aware, euros, US dollars, you can switch that. But I think it's important that you say, you know what? I like this service as a service I want to use and I'm willing to pay for this service. So if you're a business, if you're an enterprise and you're looking for a service and you say, you know what? This is about what I need to start off. 
jump in there and start paying them because you know what? That's what keeps the open source side open source. It's really important for us to pay for open source software and to make sure that they're getting the money that they need. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is their documentation. So they have a community, which is great. You can go out here and check out their community information. Then they have the learn section. So they have a lot of stuff here under the learn. Like I said, their documentation is really good. And their documentation over here is really something that I was really impressed with. That's why I kind of wanted to cover this with you guys. But so in this case, we've got installation on Debian and Ubuntu. That's what I'm going to do today. Now, they also have a Docker. That's what I started with just testing. So I'll show you guys kind of how to do the Docker as well. It's really not complicated. It's very straightforward to set up the Docker stuff. So if you want to run it that way, you can. But they have a little warning that says Docker could be limited just in depending on how many devices and services and hosts you're trying to monitor and that depends on your host operating system and how many other things you're running with Docker and stuff like that too. So be aware of that. Um, if you want to run this, you might want to set up something like an LXC container, which is what I've done and what we're going to, what we're going to run this on today to kind of see how that works. You may want to set up a specific virtual machine server or a virtual machine or an actual full on metal server that you want to run this on. It's kind of up to you and depending on what kind of resources you have to run this, but there is the option to do that as well. So here in their documentation, they talk about download the edition that you want. When they talk about the additions, it, it's really, you know, pick the edition that you want and then download the archive. It, it's really important that you understand what the additions are. So they have the raw edition, which is really the open source version, the community driven version. That's important for you to understand. There are these other additions that you can get. Again, if you need more capabilities than what the raw edition offers, then you've got that opportunity to get out there and actually get something that's bigger and better. And it may cost just a little bit of money, which is great again, because that supports the company. It supports the open source project that they're, that they're doing. So as we go down, we're going to use the raw edition today just for this video. And they've got a, a few things here kind of like set up, you know, things that you want to have set up. So you want to do apt install open SSH server. If you don't already have SSH server installed where you can, where you can SSH to the server you want, you're going to want to install that. So make sure you get that installed. Now, while we're going to do Ubuntu and Debian today, I also wanted to point out that they have the options for Red Hat, for, uh, for CentOS, and then also for SUSE Linux Enterprise. So you have a few different options here. It's not just Debian and Ubuntu. So you, you do need to run this on a Linux system. But again, if you run it through Docker, it kind of doesn't matter if you're running on a specifically a Linux system as the host, but the Docker stuff will pull down what you need in order to run this. Next thing you want to know is how to get the software. So if you click here again, you'll see this link that says addition. So you click on product at the top and then additions. And then you'll come here and it'll say, hey, what do you want to get? So in our case today, we're going to get check, check MK raw. Um, check MK Enterprise is here and available if you want to check it out. They do have some free trials, so you can do that as well. So you can try it for, for free. Uh, but we're going to get, get the, the Check MK raw today. You'll come here and it'll say, okay, what are you wanting? Linux, Docker, or are you looking for like an appliance that you can install as, an, as a virtual machine? So they do have those options as well. Depending on what you're wanting to do is completely up to you. Uh, we're going to do this one here for Linux. So we're going to look at this. We're going to see, okay, we, we want this top version. Yes, we want, in my case, Ubuntu. And I am doing it on a 2004 version. So I'm going to grab that 2004 version. We're just going to scroll down. So you just click on the options you want as you go. Keep scrolling down and you'll say install CheckMK. Downloading CheckMK for Ubuntu or Debian. And we can just use this wget script, which is great because that means I don't have to download it to this machine and then move it to another machine. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to go open up my terminal here. I'll bring that over. And we'll make this a bit larger for the people on the mobile devices. So I'm just going to paste in that wget command. We're going to let it go out and download CheckMK for us. So now we've got this deb that we've downloaded and it tells us here's what you need to do. And I'll make this a little bit larger as well for you guys. So you can see the instructions with me. But it says do sudo apt install dot slash the CheckMK package that we just downloaded. It says afterwards, we can test if the installation was successful by running the, the command and we'll do OMD version to see if we get the version number, which we should. And then we can basically create a check, check MK monitoring site, which is the next step you have to do. So this walks you right through it right here on the download page, which is great. So we're just going to go through this real quick. And it says if we want to check the SHA for the file, we can do that as well. They give you the SHA right here to do a, a quick hash on it and check that if you need to, to make sure that it's ready. They talk about the signed package installation here, and then we've got this command. So we're just going to go do sudo. I don't think we need sudo. I'm logged in as root, and I swear they said you had to do this as root, but it's okay. Um, you shouldn't do this as root. If you don't have to, you should create an actual user. But for the for brevity, we're going to do this as root. And we're just going to switch right back to that other machine. So we're just going to go over here. We're just going to paste in that command, and there it goes. Oops, it got the wrong one. It's re-downloading it. That's fine. We'll let it re-download. 
Let's see how many copies of this we have now. Yeah, we can get rid of one of these. So let's uh, rm check mk.deb.1. There we go. Good. Now we're going to clear that out. We're going to go grab the correct command here. And we're going to copy that. Paste in the right command. There we go. We'll let apt kind of do its thing here. And we'll tell it, yes, we want to install this. All right, that completed pretty quickly, which is nice. So we're just going to clear that terminal and then we're going to go back and check that command. I believe it was OMD version. And there we go. We get OMD and it tells us that that means open monitoring distribution version 2.1.0p8.cre. So this is the this is the version we're expecting. It looks like the OMD is working, which means check MK is running. So that's good. So we're going to go back. We're going to clear this out. And we're going to see what the next step is besides the version. So it says create a monitoring site. So we want to say OMD create monitoring. So after the site's been created, you will uh, see an output similar to the lines below. So we can kind of see what we're expecting here. That's good. I like that they put that in there. All right. So let's go check that out. OMD create monitoring. So we're going to do that. OMD create monitoring. Make sure I spell that right. All right. Uh, root permissions are needed, so we'll do sudo omd create monitoring. All right, so here's that output that they told us. So it tells us we can go to checkmk slash monitoring. So that's what it's dubbed this machine, I'm guessing. If we do host name, let's just see. Yep, it has checkmk-ct in my case, so that's what it picked up as the host name. So right here, we can just go to this. So we can do, I think, control click to have it open that up. I'm not sure if it's going to open it in uh, Firefox. No, it's going to open it in Chrome over here on the wrong page, but it didn't come up yet. So it doesn't seem to know how to route to that on my network. That's OK. We're going to close that. I'm going to go back to Firefox. Ah, OK, so I skipped a step. We have to do OMD start monitoring to start up the actual site. So let's go do that. So I want to get this information here, which is this password. So I'm going to copy that. So I have it. And then it's CMK admin is the username. So it'll, it'll create a default password for you that you can change afterwards, I'm sure. And then right here it says OMD SU monitoring. Um, so we can do that through here. But I'm going to do OM, uh, let's see, OMD start. Can I do it without sudo? No. All right, we've got all OKs on here. So let's go back and check our instructions. Make sure we're doing things in the right order here. Looks like that's it. And it says that we should now be able to get to our site. So that's great. So let's go and check our site again. All right, so if we go to it at least through the browser and use the IP address, it seems to function. That's good. So it's just my network is not picking up on the host name. That's, that's an issue for me on my network. It may not be an issue for you guys. So let's see that was CMK admin. And then we're going to paste in that password we copied. And no, we don't need to save it right now. So right out of the gate, you can kind of see that it's got an empty dashboard, but we're up and running. The server is up and running. So this is step one. The next thing we're going to want to do is actually go set up some hosts and some agents. But there's some things we need to do in the correct order to do that. So I'm going to walk you through that in the next part. Once you've got the server actually installed and up and running like we do, you'll see that it's very empty. And that's because there's a few things you've got to still do to get some hosts set up on your network or out on, on whatever network you want to use. Now, if you're going to use this outside of your own network, then you definitely want to have a domain name set up that you can point to this machine and make sure that things can reach it from the outside world. So you've got to have your public URLs and things like that set up. But for now, let's just focus on internal network and doing monitoring on our internal home lab networks. So one of the things they have is their documentation, as I've said, is really good. So if you come over here and you just click on the beginner's guide, it gives you kind of a nice welcome. And then if you click, you can go into setting up check mark or check MK. 
Um, and then the user interface, so they get into the user interface and they, they tell you all about it. Like, what do these symbols mean, which is great in the navigation bar, the main page, the main dashboard, kind of everything you need to know about the interface so that you can really kind of understand how to use the software. So it's really a tremendous source of information. It makes it easy so you're not having to ask a bunch of questions over in the community that are already answered here. So it's really worth it to go through here and kind of look. And they've got it really broken out nicely. They've got nice sections that are really easy to kind of understand. They're not long. They don't take long to read through and, and, and kind of see what's going on. And as you get to the bottom, you can just click on the link to go to the next setup. So in this case, setup monitoring. This is what we're interested in. So they talk about what are hosts and services and agents. And again, they, they explain, like, why is it that I can't just set up one of these servers and just have it automatically find all of my stuff on the network and just magically start monitoring those things? You, you, you can, again, in some instances, and they talk about that. So where, where a device supports SNMP, that simple network message protocol, you can automatically get some information out of that. So if you're running something like PFSense or OpenSense, you can do that. If you have hardware that already supports that, you can do that and you can start grabbing that information and kind of mapping out your network, which is really great. But whenever you don't have that, you need something like an agent and you want to make sure that those agents can, can perform certain services. So the agent that they have is just an installable agent and they have it for all kinds of systems and you go and download it and, and you really install it. Now, what you do is on your actual host, if you go to the setup page, you'll see there's a whole lot of different stuff here and it's got this host section. So again, I'm going to enlarge this to make it easier for you guys to see on your mobile devices. But if you look down here, you've got this section that says agents. And right here is where you want to go to start getting your agents that you can install on your various devices on your network and on your various machines, because that's again how you monitor things. So if you look here, you've got Linux, Windows, other operating systems. So this is going to be like your Mac OS, FreeBSD, things like that, most likely. And then you've got VMs, you've got cloud, you've got containers. So again, you can even set this up to monitor different things on your network, like VMs, cloud and containers, things that are off your network, like the cloud in particular. You've got other integrations that you can kind of check out on your own. But I mean, they've got a lot of stuff here for, for what you can do for the agents and in particular. And they've got a lot of really great stuff here in the setup area that you're going to want to check out. That, that's probably beyond the scope of this tutorial, but I want to get you guys at least set up a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the documentation for a minute because they talk about what are all of these things. And then one of the important things that you really need to jump down to here is preliminary considerations for DNS. It's better if you have DNS that makes it routable to your different devices. If you have an, a professional level network, if you're talking about small business up to enterprise level, you should have something where you can route by, by host name and you should set up your network in that way. If you're at a home lab like mine or just at your home, you probably don't have that. You might if you're somebody who kind of is into that and you want to do that. And that's great, but they're letting you know, like, hey, you know, the more you move up and the more you do with this, the more you're going to want to have host name resolution. So just be aware of that. The other thing is folder structure for hosts. So the way that this works is there's folders that you can create through the user interface. And we're going to go here to hosts and then click on hosts. And you'll kind of see here it's got these different things and it's got this thing that says add folder. So I'm going to zoom this up a little bit more again because it's really small, but you're going to click on add folder. And really what you want to do is create a folder structure. And they tell you what that structure should be. So we're just going to go in here. And we're going to call this first folder Linux. And they tell you that by default, things are not expanded that don't need to be. And things that are in basic mode are expanded. So you can make those choices. So here we're going to call this Linux. And we're going to, we're just going to say, is this going to be like a monitoring agent, checkmark API integrations? What are, what are we looking for? SNMP? What, what kind of things are we going to have in this folder? And most likely this will be agents. So I'm just going to check that box. It's, it's all good. And then we're just going to hit save. And you'll see that now we've got this Linux folder. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add again. And I'm going to call this one Windows for Windows machines. And same thing. We think this is probably going to be mostly checkmark or check MK. I keep calling it checkmark and that's bad. It's check MK agent and API integrations. So again, we're just going to hit save. And then this last one we can do is network. And we can just put like network hardware and stuff. And we'll, we'll assume that that's going to be SNMP. And we'll check that box. And it's, this doesn't really set anything. It's just kind of like a, a tagging system, in my opinion. So we'll hit save again. So we've got these three folders. Now we're going to go and we're going to go back into that setup. We're going to go down here to the agent section. Um, let's see. I'm looking for yeah, agents because I zoomed it up. It jumped over here. Sorry. I'm going to go to Linux because that's what I'm going to set this up on. 
And I'm actually going to set up the checkmark system I've got running first, uh, just because that makes sense. We're going to monitor the system that's on. Now, the one thing it can't do is a full failure. It can't tell us that something happened there because it fully failed, but it can tell us about anything weird that may be happening with the system. So you've got a couple of things. You've got a deb, you've got an RPM, you've got the CLI tool. So you've got a few different ways. You've got scripts, you've got all different kinds of things you can do here. And, and this, just look at this. I mean, this is a long list of things that you can check out. I'm on a Ubuntu system, so I can just grab this deb and I'm going to pull it down. And I'm actually just going to right click and copy this. Uh, that way I can just pull it straight over to the system and I'm just going to do a quick switch over to my terminal here. And I'm going to do wget and then I'm going to paste that in. And we're going to do an ls and we'll see we've got that check mk.deb right there. And it's the agent is the one that we're looking for here. So it's this agent right here. So just to be clear which one, because there's two there. I can remove this other one. I can do rm check mk raw. And then we only have the agent left. So now we can do sudo apt install dot slash check mk. And again, that dot deb. And we'll put in our super user password. We're going to let that thing run. It's going to go install a few things. And really, it should be up and running now. Now we can do something really simple to check and make sure things are running. So we're going to do sudo system ctl status. So we're going to check the status of the check mk agent. Uh, there we go to socket. And we just want to make sure that that thing says active, which it does. So if yours doesn't say active, you may need to do something to correct that. I don't know what it would be at this point. I haven't had this have a problem so far. So we're going to clear this out. Now we're going to go back to the browser and we're going to see if we can find what we're looking for here. So we're going to go back to setup and back to hosts. Um, now what we're going to find is if we go to this right now, we're still going to have nothing. It's, it's just going to load up. It's not going to have any information because it's not set to be monitoring anything yet because while we've set up that agent, we haven't told this thing about it. So we, we go and set up the folders. We're going to go set up the agent. We're going to go back into hosts. We're going to click on our Linux folder since that's what we just set up just to keep things organized. That's really all this is just organization. You can set this up in any way that you want to. You can set up tree organizations and all kinds of things that you want to do. If your network is massive, this is going to be a good way to kind of keep things organized in here so it's easier for you to find stuff. But we're going to say, you know what, we need to add an a, or add a host right here. So we're going to click add host and it's going to ask us for a little bit of information. So this one has a host name. And we can go and see what that host name is pretty easily with a single host name command. And it's just check mk-ct because it's, it's a container. That's why I called it that. So we're going to type that in. Okay. And then we're going to tell it an IPv4 address. So we're going to check that box and it's going to give us a blank. And we're just going to type that in. Okay. And then... If you continue down, you'll see what kind of monitoring agent do we have. We have the check MK agent and API integration is what we're using. We're not using SNMP. And then if you want to expand these, you can kind of check out what other options there are. This is nothing that we really need to do right now that I'm aware of. If you have SNMP credentials, you would check this box and type those in. But I think we're good. I don't think we need to do anything else here. So we're just going to click on save and go to the service configuration. So what you'll see is that it's actually going to go out and scan the machine. So it's scanning itself right now, actually. And it's just counting up seconds. You just need to watch and be patient while it does this. So it's trying to reach this device over the network and make sure it can find it. And then it's going to come up and tell you like, hey, here's all of the things that I found. And it's like the check MK agent. It says warn. Uh, and that's probably because it's, war it's running on itself. This is the first time I've seen this. I didn't set up the agent the first time I, I set these things up. Then it's got CPU, disk. So it's going to grab all this stuff, memory. So it's going to be checking all of these things to make sure they look okay. So what we're going to do is just go through and click on the plus for the things that we want to move to a monitored service. I'm going to go ahead and click on memory as well. So since this is running Apache, it's giving us the option for OMD monitoring of Apache, the event console, monitoring performance. We have post fix options here as well. TCP connections, uptime. So uptime I always like to monitor. So we'll click on that one. And you can see as we click on things, they disappear off the list. So that looks like a pretty good set of things to monitor. So we can see here we have an active check happening. So it says pending, which is the check MK hardware software inventory. So it's actually checking that server to see what all it's got on it. 
So I've got some systems that I set up yesterday, and I wanted to kind of show you that in this other uh, in this in this Docker version that I'm running, and I'll show you how to set up the Docker version here in just a minute. But once you've got those set up and you've run through that activation process, I've got a couple here. It's just two, and you'll see it's going to start up here, and it shows that I've got two systems basically that are up. 77 things that are being that are being monitored that are okay. I've got 88 total, so it's got five that have or three that have warnings. So we can look down here and see what these three are. And it says interface 19. So it shows that it's a 10 gigabit per second. I, I doubt that. This is probably an internal thing. Uh, and it's basically getting, you know, expected 10 megabyte per second. So there's just something misconfigured about one of these one of these uh, interfaces on this machine. That's fine. But check MD MK Discovery is just telling me, hey, there's three unmonitored services. So I could click on this and it'll take me and it'll kind of tell me a little bit more detail about what those are. And it's interfaces, and again, this is where I run a lot of things with Docker, so you got to be aware that this is going to find a whole bunch of special interfaces for Docker and as bridge interfaces, so it doesn't have to monitor everything most of the time, but, uh, you know, maybe something that you want to fix. So if we go back to the dashboard, so the NTP time, again, it's got a warning, and it says that it's got a little offset, and the last sync for this machine uh, was about 38 minutes ago, so there's something going on there. So we look over here, you can see a bunch of events for the last four hours, basically, which is pretty cool. So the more you add to these machines, the more you the more you add to the system, the more you're going to see different things that are happening. So I think this is pretty great. And and again, um, there's a lot of different views that you can check out. So you can add, you can see dashboards here. So you can say main dashboard, check MK dashboard. So you've got some dashboard options. You've got display options as well, and then help, and then a few options out here. If we go over here to monitor, we've got a few different things that we can see. And if we go here to customize, we've got even some more options that we can see. So there's a lot going on that we can actually kind of check out. So you do have a user section, so you can go in and add users to the system that can actually access this and monitor it. And then you can set up roles and permissions for those users, just like many systems that are out there. Again, I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to kind of go through and say, you know what, I want to check this out and see what else is there. As we go through, though. You have contact groups and roles and permissions, just like I was talking about. So you can set up the roles and permissions, apply those to your groups or to your users, you know, put your users in groups to make things easier, of course. You've got notifications. So we can go in now. It's going to tell me I haven't configured notification stuff yet. So just be aware. I haven't set up my fallback email address, but you'll want to know your SMTP information and then set up your email address so that you can get notifications and, and send notifications through the system as well. Maintenance wise, you have backups capabilities, so you can go here and create backups, download those things in case anything happens, you can bring the system back up basically the way that it was and have a have a good way to kind of bring things right back up and get it going again if you need to. So you can also customize your dashboards so you can go through and actually change up the way the dashboard looks, the way it's laid out, add different things that you want to see or don't see. So I think that's pretty great. I mean, you're getting a lot of power out of the box. And again, this is an open source project, which is really awesome. You can add other dashboards. You can create your own dashboards as well. So that's kind of a nice feature whenever you start thinking about how do I want to make this thing work? I want to add a new dashboard and kind of configure that. So you can have more than one. So when you go here to the dashboards, you can see you've got this thing that says dashboards. You see we're on the main dashboard. We can check this check MK dashboard, but we don't have it really set up yet. But we have the option there to switch. So as you add more, you'll get more in that list and you can switch pretty quickly and pretty easily there. Again, with the display, you can filter things out. You can put this page without navigation. So if we click on that, you see the navigation on the left goes away. So you get a little bit more space for the actual dashboard and information itself. And then you can put the navigation back just by clicking on this page with navigation. So with all the information that you get here from the main dashboard, you've also got this little right side menu. So no matter where you are, you can always pop this out and then close it. It's here in the bottom left. And you can really configure this. And right now it says undefined, but what you can do um, is close this out. You can close all these things out, but you're getting a little bit of information about what things are on or off here from the from the master control. But then you can click on plus and it brings you to this screen where you can add different sections. And as you kind of scroll through these things, you just click on a section to add it over to the right side. So as we go down, you can kind of see some interesting information. So like the overview, we'll get it. I don't know why it keeps refreshing and going away. Um, we've got this nice little speedometer needle that kind of tells us like, you know, how, how much of the server are we using up to get things running? So you can kind of customize that. And then when you're done with it, just close it. When you want it back, you open it back up. But there's a lot of little widgets there that you can put there as well. So I think really kind of a great tool from that perspective. Um, this really does some really great stuff. And as we look here, again, just looking at the different options for the monitor, 
So you get a lot of options here just out of the kind of the gate from from looking at it from an overview standpoint. You get the main monitor, you get kind of your, your main dashboard, you get all hosts, you get a host search. So if we click on all hosts, let's just see, you can see here kind of what's going on and we can see that it's up. OK, we've got the host information there. And then if we go back into monitor, um, you get this network topology, which is kind of cool. So as you build out your network, you'll see kind of where things are in relation to each other. So as you're building this out and installing it on different devices, you kind of get a nice topology of the network there, which is really great. You see this in a few different applications these days and being able to do this really nicely is important, I think, for a lot of people in a visual, visual sense of where things are at in the network and how they're communicating. So very cool there. You have service groups, you can see scheduled downtimes if you have any of that stuff. And then, of course, you can see any kind of comments that people have left. If there's problems, you can see that as well. So you can click on here and kind of see any problems. Here we've got warnings that are happening. So again, we can kind of see a concise list. But you can, again, go back and set this up in dashboards. So it's really easy right when it first comes up to get a nice overview of your network, of the devices and machines on your network, and see what's going on with them, and to kind of monitor those things and know when there's something going on that you might want to pay attention to. So you can go in and, again, click on these things to check them out and see what's happening and see if it's something you need to go address. So this is Check MK. I think, again, this is a terrific network monitoring tool, and it's really a network and system monitoring tool, which is pretty awesome. Getting it set up really isn't that hard, and I really just think that you guys would enjoy this tool uh, as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set this up in Docker right after this. So now we're going to do this in Docker. It's really, really straightforward. We're just going to go ahead and get into whatever server you want. Make sure you've got Docker and Docker Compose installed on it. Now, if you want to set up an actual URL and you're doing this on your home lab, you'll want to do your Nginx proxy manager setup or your traffic setup. Depending on what you're using for your reverse proxy, you'll want to have that too. If you've not done that before, I've got tutorials on how to set up Docker, Docker Compose, Nginx Proxy Manager, and even Portainer for like having a nice web GUI for managing your Docker stuff as well. Um, I've got a script out there that'll install all those things for you in one run, and I've, I've got to fix a few things. There's people who've been giving me some feedback on it, so that's great, and I appreciate it. But generally, it runs pretty well, especially if you're using Ubuntu um, as your base system, so, so just be aware of that. But I do have it for CentOS Arch, Ubuntu, Debian. Um, I need to work on Alma and Rocky. They don't work from the CentOS version for some reason, so... If anybody gets these things to work or you want to check out my script or pull it down and fix it so that it works for those as well, feel free. I'd be happy to have some pull requests for that too. So right now, I'm just going to assume that you've got Docker, Docker Compose installed. On the show notes, I'll have a section on it about how to get that set up and ready. And we're just going to basically go through my normal procedure. So I always like to have a folder called Docker that I keep everything in for Docker. So I'm going to CD into my Docker folder. I'm going to do an LS and you can see here I don't have check MK yet. So I'm going to create a folder for check MK with MKDIR check MK. And I'm just going to do CD check MK now. Do an LS. You can see there's nothing there. And I'm just going to clear that out and I'm going to create a Docker compose.yaml file. So I'm going to say nano, which is a text editor in the terminal docker hyphen compose dot yml so we're just going to paste in some text and again i'll have this in the show notes so you can just go grab this and, and copy and paste basically but it's going to be a version 3.3 .3 of this docker compose uh, yaml and then the services that we're going to run is just going to be check mk raw and right here it's going to have a section that says ports and it's going to forward 8080 to port 5000 for the application that's running then they've got a couple of things where they're setting up a temporary file system in slash opt, and that's fine. Don't worry about that. Tempfs is going to be slash opt, slash cmd, or omd, slash site, slash cmk. And they've got this stuff set up for PID and a GID. That's fine. Then we've got a volume. We've got a couple of volumes that we're going to set up here as well. Um, we don't actually have to have this, this one set up, but it's fine to set it up because it's just setting up the local time so that you've got the right time. So you can kind of leave this as it is. This one's going to set up a volume inside of your, your, your folder that you have here for, for monitoring. And then we've got the container name, um, which is monitoring. You can change this to whatever name you want. You could call this check MK if that's what you prefer to call it. Um, does, doesn't really matter, but monitoring is fine. It's going to restart always, basically. So if you restart the server, it's going to it's going to restart itself. If it has an error, it's going to try to restart itself. So, so there's a lot of conditions that make it basically make it restart itself so it doesn't crash and just stop running on you. 
Uh, and then it's going to use the image of check MK and then it's check MK raw and they have 200 latest is what they have in their documentation. I think we had a 2.1.0 so you can go out to GitHub and or I mean uh, sorry Docker Hub and check and see what their latest version is but they said they do suggest pinning the version number instead of just pinning it at the latest thing because the latest thing may not be stable always so it just depends on how you want to run things but we'll run with what they had in their documentation it was very 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 easy to get this kind of set up and, and use this as a docker compose um, now if you want to update it you'll want to watch their their releases and make sure you know that there's an update available and then change this version number and and go and rerun the docker compose up command that we're going to do here in just a minute so once we've got that we're going to save it with Control o confirm the name just hit enter and then Control x to exit nano and now if we do an ls you see we have that docker compose.yaml file there now we can just do docker hyphen compose up and if you want to see the logs as it goes you can just run this and then but if you do Control c it's going to stop and then you got to run docker compose up dash d to run it as daemon so what i like to do is just run the dash d and then do two ampersands docker hyphen compose up or i mean sorry logs dash f so docker compose logs dash f at the end and basically what's going to happen is it's going to run this command first it's going to bring this thing up and run it as a daemon in the background and then as soon as it finishes with that, it's going to show me the logs for what's for what's going on so I can kind of monitor what's happening with it. So I like to run this the first time at least just to make sure everything's running. I don't see any weird errors, stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter. It's going to go out and pull down the image, which is what we expect. It's got a couple of good size uh, pieces here, or image, you know, pieces to this image that it pulls down. So be patient because it pulls it down, then it extracts it. Um, this system runs pretty fast. I've got this running on one of my virtual servers, so it goes pretty quick. Now this is probably one of the biggest ones, it's about 180 megabytes, so it takes just a second to extract that out. Once it's done, it's going to start up the actual server and you'll be ready to go. So now it's going to start the server, we should get a done message right there. Now it's going to start showing us the actual logs that it's putting out. So you can see there that says creating a state, generating a configuration, and then it gives you an OK, and then it runs through a few other things here. And basically it's doing all those things that we saw and that we ran kind of manually. And you can see here that it says, hey, I'm starting up this thing. And you saw that OK. Remember, we had to go start the actual site running. Then we could log in. So you get the same thing. You get this, hey, here's the admin pass. And then here's the password we have to have. So we want to copy this. Make sure to either right click and say copy or, you know, control shift C once you've highlighted it. And then your, your admin user is still C, CMK admin. And of course you can change that in the user interface. But right here, it's got this kind of long thing because Docker gives it a weird name. So again, we just want to use the IP address to get to it. So we'll just do a, a quick switch over to the browser here. And we're going to open up a new tab and we'll see if we can access this thing. So we're just going to do HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.10. And I did this on my dot 42 lab and then we're going to do colon 8080. It's going to try to reach that address and as long as you don't have something already using 8080 on that host you're going to be set. If you do you can change that 8080 and that port mapping to something else. But in this case uh, we're going to zoom this up a bit. We're going to do cmk admin and then we're going to paste in that password we copied. Now, if you're not sure of your passwords, you should definitely go in the first time you log in and change that. So let me just show you where that is real quick. Um, if we go here under users, so you've got a few things there. And then here we've got the change password for our user, basically. So you put in the current password that you just had and then put in a new strong password that you want to use. And you enter it again to make sure you typed it correctly. And then you can just hit save. And it's going to go and it's going to tell you like, hey, this thing was updated successfully. So now you could log out, log back in using that password that you just set. So you know what your password is. Of course, you should use a password manager if you can. Check out my video on Vault Warden for that if you want to self-host your own password manager. But that's it. We've got this thing up and running. We're ready to go and actually start doing all the other steps that I showed you, which is create that folder, go download the actual uh, file that you want to put on your different machines and then start monitoring your machine. So now we're running in Docker instead of on bare metal like the uh, the first one that we did uh, here. But in this case, you can see. So, yeah, this one logged out, uh, timed out. So there we go. Um, but, yeah, we've got everything kind of ready and set. And, and I'm up and running with CMK, uh, with Check MK, which is pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of liking this. I'm going to keep messing with it. I'm going to go out there and add a bunch of more of my, my devices and kind of start really monitoring my network devices and seeing what all I can do with this thing. But it looks like a really great product. I really like it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe. 
Tell your friends about it so they can come along in the open source journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time.